Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Rachel Barber, and I am part of the learning and development team here at PAI Pharma. I'm going to be your moderator for this module on good laboratory practices. Um, a little bit about me. I've been at PAI Pharma for about three and a half years. Um, I started out in our microbiology lab. I moved over to our chemistry lab. And then a few months ago, I decided to transfer into our learning and development team as a training specialist. So most of my experience is in the lab. So the, the learning and development part is a little new to me, but we're going to get through it. Um, today, we're going to go over GLPs and how we can use them in our everyday life. Make sure you take notes. We will have three assignments, three little activities that you will have to complete that have already been uploaded in your Blackboard. And we will have two videos that we will watch throughout the PowerPoint. So. Um, we will get started. So some of the key objectives that we will be focusing on today are the definition of GLPs and how we can use them in our everyday life, laboratory safety and how that affects everybody, including you, the importance of training and what it means to be properly trained, labeling and documentation and how crucial it is to stay in compliance, cleanliness and storage for the best organized lab and working area, and equipment and utilities, which helps maintain a cohesive running laboratory. So what are GLPs, Good Laboratory Practices? GLPs embody a set of principles that provide a framework which laboratory studies are planned, performed, monitored, reported, and archived. They help us assure regulatory authorities that the data submitted are the true reflection of the results obtained during study which means that as a corporation, we must follow the guidelines in place to produce a product free of contamination. We are able to do this by providing proper paperwork to provide a quality product. As consumers, that being us, it is very important because it allows the company to give peace of mind to the public that a product is being consumed, has been studied and deemed safe. So we will now take those principles and apply them to laboratory safety. So laboratory safety is very important, very important to me, um, working in a laboratory. It's a hustle and bustle. So you always wanna be aware of, of your surroundings and what is going on in a laboratory. So following laboratory safety limits the exposure to hazards and keeps you and your colleagues safe, which is top priority. We will focus on the more important practices to follow. So starting out, no food or drinks are permitted in the lab. This is not allowed at any time. This could increase your exposure to hazardous materials and risk of contamination. So no chewing gum, no hard candies, no drinks, no water, uh, no sodas, nothing of that nature. Um, again, it prevents you from any contamination of anything in the lab getting into your body that is not supposed to be ingested by you. Secondly, very, very important that we always wear our PPE and proper lab attire. PPE is um, proper or personal protective equipment. This includes safety glasses or goggles to protect your eyes from harm, long pants and closed toed shoes to protect legs and feet from spills, and essentially a lab coat or an apron to protect your clothes and skin from exposure to chemicals. So basically you wanna make sure that all of your skin is covered as much as possible to limit the exposure to chemicals. Just remember that your skin can absorb chemicals if they ever come in contact with anything in the lab. So make sure that we're covering our hands, covering our skin, making sure that we're wearing closed toed shoes um, and lab coats to protect us from any harsh chemicals. Next, we wanna maintain good hygiene. This includes washing hands after handling hazardous materials, limit the amount of cosmetics worn due to the increased risk of exposure, and making sure that we're wearing gloves when if there's ever any lesions, cuts, or scrapes that are open on our hands. So if you've cut your hands open, cut your skin open, make sure you're covering it with a lab coat, covering that with gloves. You never wanna have those exposed to chemicals. Again, your skin can 
kind of absorb that in superficially and make you very sick. So, all right, next we wanna stay focused and aware of our surroundings. Again, like I said, a lab can be a very busy environment and filled with distractions. So we wanna limit the amount of time we work alone. Um, we always wanna make sure that we have a second set of eyes that can prevent hazards that's not you know, being seen by one person. So if you're the only person in the lab, you're not always going to be aware of everything happening around you. So it's always good to have a second or third person in there that would be able to help you in the event of an emergency. So you just wanna make sure that you're using all five senses to create situational awareness. Always be sort of aware of all of your surroundings and what is going on so you can keep yourself and your coworkers protected. Next, we want to make sure that we're participating and engaging in safety exercises. Uh, you wanna make sure that you know where all the lab equipment um, the emergency um, equipment, lab, lab equipment in the lab, um, the location of them. So you wanna be aware of your fire extinguishers, your spill kits, your first aid kits, and lab showers. Uh, you will need to obviously know where these are in the event of an emergency. Um, when you're first brought into a lab, um, depending on where you go, this should probably be part of the first time you have your lab tours. Um, where all of these emergency equipments are um, and probably within your first week, how to use them um, if they are equipments that you have never used before. And lastly, we wanna make sure that we're maintaining proper labeling and storage. So use of proper storage and labeling applies to individual containers, storage cabinets and waste. For example, chemicals should be stored in containers made of materials that will not react as with any chemical storage, waste should be stored in non-reactive containers labeled with contents and their hazards. While these are just a few examples, we should always try to strive to have the best laboratory behaviors to ensure safety for us and everyone around us. So our first video is just a general lab safety video. Um, this is not specifically for pharmaceuticals, but this will give you an idea of um, some general lab safety that you should be having in your uh, laboratories when you go to your place of business. Ah, labs. We love labs. They're the best part of science, the whole doing part. And since you're probably going to be doing some amazing science labs this year, we thought we'd outline a few major points of general lab safety. Because safety is a big deal. And while this is certainly not all the points of safety, always read through the safety guidelines specific to the lab you're doing, these are some major general safety rules that apply for many types of labs. First, let's talk about shoes and hair. We have neither of those, but if you do, long hair needs to be pulled back. You should wear closed-toed shoes because you don't want to be pouring something toxic on your feet or walking on broken glass. Speaking of broken glass, bags and stuff in the aisles and lab rooms do not help. You want a clear path and not have your belongings out where someone could trip over them. And no horseplay. To protect your eyes, wear goggles. And when we say wear goggles, we all know that on your forehead doesn't count. If you do feel as though something has gotten in your eyes, you will want to use the eye wash station, which will require you to hold your eyes open under the running water. If your lab involves working with specimens or chemicals, you will likely be advised to wear gloves. Gloves are important. Yes, yeah, sometimes they make your hands feel clammy, but you know what's worse? Chemicals that can irritate or burn your skin. If you have an allergy to latex, you should make sure that the gloves you are using are latex free. Ask your instructor. In fact, if you have any allergies, you should let your instructor know. When you finish a lab, even if you wore gloves, it's a good idea to wash your hands after time in the lab. Some labs may require you to wear an apron to protect your clothes. Depending on what type of course you are in and the type of labs you are doing, you also might have a safety shower, which will dump a very large amount of water on you if you get some type of hazardous chemical on you. If you accidentally break glassware, don't pick it up. It could cut you. A broom and a dustpan should be used to clean it up, and there should be a place designated for broken glass. Not the regular trash where it would just break through the trash liner. If you see glassware that is chipped already, don't use it and tell your instructor. 
Never drink or eat anything in the lab. That includes chemicals. Don't taste or smell chemicals. Read labels. Don't ever pour chemicals that you may be using back into the bottle that they came from. As soon as you finish pouring chemicals out of a container, the container should be immediately closed. When you're done with a chemical, you want to make sure you properly dispose of it. Many chemicals can't just be put down the drain. In fact, some solid items that you use in your labs also cannot be thrown away in the regular trash and have to be disposed of as hazardous waste. Always check with your instructor. In some labs, you may have a special ventilation system, also known as a fume hood. This is used when dealing with volatile substances, which is a fancy way of describing a substance that can easily vaporize. Some of your labs may require the fume hood because some of these volatile substances may be harmful if you inhale them. When you're heating things up, like this test tube in a hot water bath, don't have the test tube pointed towards you. Use tongs or heat protective gloves to handle the test tube that you may be heating. Also, electricity and water are not a good mix. So when you're doing your super awesome microscope lab, you want to keep the water away from the electrical cord. And speaking of microscopes, we could have an entire video on just working with the microscope. But for now, we'll make sure to mention carrying it with two hands, one hand underneath the base and the other holding the microscope arm. If you're using any special science equipment, it's important to know how to carefully carry it. If you are in a lab that has an open flame, obviously be aware of the flame. Review with your instructor how to operate the valve that controls the gas fueling the flame. Review with your instructor how to properly heat the various glassware that will be suspended over the flame. Every time you are in the lab with an open flame, you must keep all materials that may be flammable away from the area near the flame. Depending on the types of labs you're doing, your lab room may also have a fire extinguisher and or a fire blanket in the room. Finally, the MSDS. It stands for Material Safety Data Sheet. It's available for pretty much every substance you use in your lab. You should refer to it because it will give you all kinds of safety information on a substance, including how to safely handle it, what to do if there's an accident with it, how to safely dispose of it, and more. Okay, so yeah, that was a lot. And there are so many more safety guidelines that may be specific to the lab that you're going to do. So you always wanna go through specific guidelines in advance of your lab. We're gonna put some items up here so you can pause this video and determine where those items are if they're relevant to your lab room. Remember, don't be intimidated. Just respect safety rules and guidelines because if you're following them, Hands-on science is simply awesome. In addition to the hands-on part of science, you can always check out our science comic video clips that may be helpful on a variety of science topics you might cover this year. Well, that's it for the Muta Sisters, and we remind you to stay curious. All right, hopefully that was very informative for you. Like I said, it's not specifically for pharmaceuticals, but just general lab safety. Um, we have come to the point in our PowerPoint um, for you to go over to your blackboard and complete your first activity. Uh, this recording will keep going, but you can just pause it here, um, go to your activity, and then be able to come back and just hit play. And we'll keep going. So next, um, the next objective we're moving on to is laboratory training. Uh, laboratory training is very important because it gives uh, the individual the ability to develop skills such as critical thinking, task performance, and communication. As laboratory personnel, keeping up with training and training documents is very important. Documents should be properly stored by a supervisor, management, and charge a training document. So most of the time uh, where I work, we have a training document that we fill out. That training document then goes to a supervisor, which is signed, and then it goes to our training department and it is filed in our personnel file. So these training documents give you the ability to start performing tasks within the lab. So all laboratory personnel as well as um, any other personnel should be tra trained by the qualified on the job trainer in accordance with standard operating procedures or SOPs. So these tasks should not be performed by any personnel if they are not fully and adequately trained. Fully and adequately trained um, means the associate has shadowed a task. Um, 
performed a task side by side with a trainer, then absorbed performing the task by trainer several times. So at that point, after you have performed the task um, independently and on your own, and you have performed it um, up to the standard of the operating procedure, you will then be signed off on that task and be able to then perform that task independently. You know, both parties at this point should feel very comfortable moving forward. Um, and the trainee is then given permission to start performing tasks. So just make sure that when you're going through training that if you have questions, stop your trainers and ask those questions. And you're not just kind of flying through training to get to get through it, to get to the other side. Make sure that your training um, is adequate and that you're understanding what is going on. And that's with anybody that's not he just here, that's that's anywhere. We want to make sure that across the board that we have that mind frame going in the training. All right, our next objective that we're moving on to is laboratory documentation and labeling. Um, as we move through our GOP training, you'll notice how important it is uh, to document everything and label everything. This will be a reoccurring theme throughout the rest of the training, but also throughout the rest of the curriculum. I know that you will either be going through GMP training either before or after this module, um, but you'll hear this a lot um, with, with documentation. So laboratory documentations are designed to provide proof of accurate and reliable testing. All laboratory documents should portray clear and concise control of the environment under GMP requirements, which again, you will go through um, in another module. Remember, if you didn't document it, it did not happen. This is something that I've heard said several times. Um, you can say, all day long that you did something, but if you didn't sign for it or you didn't write it down, it never happened, especially if there's no record of it happening or um, a step in a protocol was missed or skipped. Um, just remember to always document everything. Uh, these documents that you'll be writing on include but are, are limited to lab notebooks, worksheets, and analytical working printouts. Um, these essentially are proving that we are following a standard operating procedure or a protocol or a work instruction, that we're following essentially the directions of what we should be doing in the laboratory. As much as documentation is important, properly labeling in the laboratory and equip equipment is just as important to the flow of the lab. It ensures accuracy, safety, and the ability to differentiate one material or a chemical against another. another. So, Essentially, labeling limits the risk of exposure to da dangerous chemicals that are found in a laboratory and informs personnel of the potential hazards that are associated with specific chemicals. So, for example, um, if you're in a scenario where you're handling a clear liquid, um, if you pour that clear liquid into a beaker, you always want to make sure that you're, you're writing on the beaker what it is. Um, here, we do initials, state what the chemical is. Um, and a, potentially what a hazard is because you don't ever want to take clear liquid and think it's one thing and it's another. So if you, if I were to leave something on the counter and I don't know what it is and somebody, or I haven't written down the beaker what it is and somebody comes behind me and picks that with bare hands or spills it on themselves and they don't know what it was, um, there's the potential for some hazardous, um, uh, chemicals to get on my skin and that could lead to a potentially dangerous situation. So we always may want to make sure that no matter what chemicals we're using um, and how we're using them, that we label a beaker or a graduated cylinder or things of that nature. So essentially lab labeling prevents safety, um, backs up every all the safety lab um, protocols that we went over earlier. Uh, we want to make sure that our documents are clear and concise. Um, we're making sure that we're labeling equipment and glassware to limit the, list, limit the risk of exposures. Um, also prevents the use of unstable chemicals. So if I put a chemical into a beaker and it's got an expiration date on it, um, depending on what that chemical is, it could become an unstable chemical and we don't know what kind of reaction that is going to um, to give us. So we always want to make sure that we're labeling and taking care of our chemicals properly. So going along with the labeling and having clear and concise 
um, documentation. Uh, we follow an Alcoa um, method here at PAI Pharma, and it could be um, throughout pharmaceuticals, depending on where you go. I'm sure that there will be a um, something similar to this, but essentially, this is a representation, a visual rep representation of what Alcoa is. So attributable, it's a very hard word to say, <laughs> which means raw data is traceable to authorized personnel recording the data. Legible, meaning the raw data is easy to read. Contemporaneous, uh, which means that the raw data is recorded at the time of the observation. So essentially we don't want to say that we saw something happen two hours later than when it really happened. So make sure that we're documenting when it, the task or when the event happens. Original uh, means the data is firsthand observation and not a copy. And accurate, which means the data is unaltered and correct for recording the observation. So those are the, the main, the main um, standard for Alcoa. The plus um, was added later for data integrity, which is also very important. We want to make sure that what we're what we're writing and what we're documenting is is truthful, um, and that we're we're projecting that we are understanding DMP processes. So, uh, the complete, it's meaning um, all entries include all data required. Consistent follows the data at the time of the event. Enduring. Um, which means that the data is maintained. And available simply means that the data is available for using. So essentially that is if the FDA comes and they wanna make sure that you're trained and wanna see training documents or a batch record, things of that nature, that they are available immediately. But this, the whole um, visual is a standard um, that should always be upheld when writing on any documents within a GMP laboratory. All right, we're going to move on to laboratory cleanliness and storage. So a laboratory can be a potentially dangerous environment if not kept clean and tidy. A cluttered or unorganized laboratory could result in inaccurate results, contamination, or safety hazards. So again, safety is popping up here. Um, contamination is popping up. And these are all things that we have already covered so far. So we want to make sure that we are maintaining a tidy work area. We saw in the video, we wanna make sure that we're keeping, you know, uh, bags or trip hazards or anything out of the aisles of the lab. We wanna make sure that everything is free of debris, residue and clutter. Uh, use of unclean and unwashed glassware or components could render inaccurate results, which also could result in a waste of energy and time. So we wanna make sure that the use um, of clean glassware, things of uh, like spatulas and scoopers. So for example, if you are using a scooper um, for one chemical and you move on to another one and use that same scooper, you have now contaminated both chemicals and that can render inaccurate results at the end of your testing. Immediately cleaning up spills or accidents and according with SDS forms, we went over that in the video. Um, there should always uh, be available to you. We want to stay aware and up-to-date of our SDS documents. This is a detailed informational document prepared by the manufacturer or importer of hazardous chemicals. They should have a designated location easily acceptable to you. So when you go through your initial laboratory tour, this should be something that is pointed out to you immediately. We want to make sure that we're protecting samples or reagents from contamination that will assure the most accurate results. So having adequate storage um, for hazardous and non-hazardous materials and flammable and non-flammable materials is very important. Um, there are special cabinets that hazardous and non-hazardous um, chemicals are put into. And we want to make sure that we are not overfilling those cabinets and they have room um, kind of to spare between um, between bottles or between cups, things of that nature. So we also wanna avoid items that could be seen as, like I said, trips, slips and falls for maintaining a tiny work area. And we're gonna put away items in proper storage spaces that could be considered hazardous. Safety hazards can be avoided by proper storage, obviously. 
of any materials that are not being readily used, clearing countertops of unused chemicals and equipment, and assuring all pathways in the laboratory are clear um, of any trip hazards. So we want to make sure that when we're not using um, specific reagents or specific chemicals that we put, put them away in their proper storage areas because you don't know how a chemical or a reagent is going to react um, by being exposed to light or being exposed to the elements outside of a proper storage container. So this is just a visual um, of, a, of a flammable cabinet. So in the lab, you may have to use um, like a Bunsen burner, things of that nature. So these would take the place of that. Um, and this is just um, what I believe to be a properly, um, a proper workstation. Everything is tidy, everything is clean. Um, your readily available um, pipettes or things of that nature, you, won't, you don't have to kind of run around the lab to find things, they're all right there in your workstation. Um, which kind of creates a flow when you're testing um, that will help you in the long run. So now we have come to our second activity. Um, this is, again, this, this recording will keep going. You'll just have to pause here and go finish um, or go complete the activity in your Blackboard and then come back and play um, the recording and we'll keep going. So lastly, I want to say that we are um, going over laboratory equipment and utilities. So laboratory instrument and equipment is a crucial part of a fully functioning laboratory. As personnel, we rely heavily on the ability to use equipment and know that it's um, working at its optimum standard. So we achieve this by preventive and maintenance, equipment and instrument validations, and proper cleaning procedures as part of a quality management plan. We wanna ensure that our equipment is being tested and validated per protocol and on a regular schedule. So when you get into your labs, um, wherever they may be, there's going to be certain equipment that is validated on a yearly basis um, or calibrated on a yearly basis or calibrated on a six month or, or a quarterly basis. And there are things that have to, are our equipment that have to be calibrated on a daily basis. So that is something that you'll eventually just learn um, working in your laboratory. Um, and this prepares basically the lab for optimal production. So you wanna make sure that the equipment that you have, you can rely on it to do the volume of testing that you need to do to be able to kind of get product out the door um, to make sure that we are testing correctly and that we are getting those results um, that are accurate. Again, that we went over it before. If we're using unclean glassware, um, that's going to render inaccurate results. It's the same thing with the laboratory equipment. Um, if our laboratory equipment isn't cleaned properly, is not validated properly, um, and the preventative maintenance is not kept up on that, it will also render inaccurate results. So it's kind of a twofold situation to make sure that we are are using our equipment um, and it is up to date and cleaned properly. So this is just essentially going over what we have gone. Oh, I went too far.
All right, guys, you know how I told you that I was new at this. So even though this is recorded, I still make accidents. So I'm so sorry about that. That video um, hopefully was a more informative. It does kind of go over um, after we went over the laboratory equipment and things of that nature. That video is just kind of give you a heads up on what kind of um, equipment you could see in the lab. Um, your beakers, your graduated cylinders, your funnels, things of that nature. We have gone over that. Just make sure, obviously, that when you're using them, you use them with care. Um, you're using them um, to the best of your knowledge and um, we will move forward like that. So we're gonna skip that and move on to our next slide here. So essentially this is just um, another visual of common lab equipment. Like I said, we just went over the, the video which kind of gives you a more in-depth insight to the kind of lab equipment that will be used in a lab. And this is just a cute little cartoon over here to make sure that we are using um, proper cleaning procedures to make sure that we're in a dust-free environment. Again, we want to make sure that we're um, giving our equipment the opportunity to work at optimal optimal levels. So we're we're making sure that we're doing the preventative maintenance and we're cleaning the machines properly, and making sure that we're dusting or turning machine off, machines off, equipment off, and we're not using it. So we're just going to use a little bit of common sense there. All right, we have come to your third and final activity um, for this module. Again, you can pause this, um, go perform or go complete your activity in Blackboard and then come back and we'll finish up the module. All right, and that concludes our training of good laboratory practices. I just wanna say thank you. Um, this is where I like to leave you guys with a little quote. It is not only what we do, but also what we do not do for which we are accountable. So I know that we went over earlier about if it didn't, if if you didn't document it, it didn't happen. This kind of also goes along those lines of things I've heard um, in my tenure in pharmaceuticals that do the right thing, even when nobody is watching, right is right. So we just want to make sure that we're having integrity um, and we're using we're using our common sense and our brains when we're in, in a laboratory setting or in a pharmaceutical setting in general. Um, and I, I appreciate you all being here. Um, and I hope that you guys learned something and that the rest of the program um, is great. Thank you guys so much.